this video I'm gonna break down how you can do the Loki transformation effect that's seen in Loki and Thor and pretty much all of the MCU every time Loki shows up. <laughs> I know there's a lot of tutorials on YouTube on how to do the Loki transformation effect, but I think maybe one or two of them only in DaVinci Resolve using Fusion. So today I'm actually gonna break it down how I performed the, the transformation effect using Fusion. If you're someone who's intimidated by Fusion and the whole node system, don't worry, it's a really simple effect. It utilizes masking to actually perform the effect and I'll break it down for you. If you have more questions about Fusion or want to learn more about Fusion, subscribe to the channel. I'll be, I'm kind of working backwards, but I'll be doing a, a intro to Fusion, kind of breaking down some of the bases, hopefully to make more people more comfortable with the Fusion system in DaVinci Resolve. Now, with all that being said, if you enjoyed today's content, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for future content. Before you get into Fusion, you want to make sure your clips line up. It's real simple, just pick the transition point and uh, you can lower the opacity and the inspector on the first clip and just make sure they line up. They don't have to be perfect because of the way the effect works. You know, you, you transform it. So there's gonna be a little shift. Even in the movies, you'll notice there's a little shift in his movement from one character or one form to another. Once you get your clips lined up, you wanna hit Control B to cut uh, the top layer or the top clip so that you'll know where, you know, where the transition's gonna start at. You're gonna click, right click, turn to a new fusion clip. From there, you jump into fusion. Once in Fusion, you'll grab a Polygon node, hit Invert, so that way you can actually see what you're doing. And this is pretty much the hardest part of the whole effect is basically masking. Make sure you're on the first frame of the clip, and then basically you're gonna start drawing the mask. Now in the example video, I started with my hand. And for this one, for the tutorial, I'm gonna start on my shoulder, and basically just move down the timeline. When you move down the timeline and begin to stretch out the mask, you basically want the mask to cover the entire subject. And a good thing with DaVinci Resolve, when you're doing masking in Fusion, anytime any alteration to the mask, it automatically makes the keyframe, so you don't have to worry about trying to make sure if you click the keyframe or not to for the effect to record. And you notice the Loki's effect is, the Loki transformation effect is really random. Like it kind of just start from one spot, spreads all over. It's never really just top to bottom like most tutorials uh, show you. It mostly it just kind of moves, I guess you can call it organically across his body. Like, it's like you just keep going from keyframe to keyframe, continues the masking. Now the effect actually happens really quick when in, in the movies when it happens. I'm actually kind of stretching it out. Just basically, you can kind of get more of a, a look at it as it occurs. And you select your next keyframe and just stretch it out again. Now this effect is really simple, as long as you're like stationary or you know in a in a somewhat of a set position if you want to do this transition while uh you know in motion i would suggest you having a, a green screen otherwise you basically have to be really particular in your movement make sure you you know put down some markers or something like that so you can kind of lock in the, the movement so that everything will line up on one another and here on the last little bit of the masking i'm just making sure it's masking out only my hand and my sh shoulders and stuff like that you can go to uh once you're done you actually, you know, play it back and that's the whole transition. You're gonna go and soften up the edges a little bit. Then click your media one, click the background note. That's the next thing you're gonna need. And it should go black. If it goes black, you mean you're doing something right. Then you're gonna get the paint node. Then go into your toolbox by hitting uh, control and spacebar. Get the soft glow, lower the alpha. Click the paint node, click this little spline, spline editor, I think is what it's called. Kind of like the B spline, B spline node. And you just want to select two points, two random points. You don't have to match up to anything. Pick your color. And you know, I pick green because it's a little okay. You go to stroke controls, go down, right click. You go to connect to polygon, poly. And it literally coats your entire mask that you just done with the same color as your glow effect. 
and that's pretty much the transition there that's like i said that's how simple it is we're gonna go into more a little bit more detail though and i'm going back in here to shift the mask a little bit because it kind of cuts off on right on my face so it's gonna be actually you know a little a little more movement towards the end transition let's see it render all right so we're gonna go back in the fusion oh okay go to the clip back in the fusion and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna click the soft glow we're gonna click raise that's gonna give you kind of that little shine shimmer effect you can kind of manipulate how you want i would manipulate too much because it actually starts to kind of break down a little bit especially when you put the next trend, next effect in which is star glow and to get the star glow you're gonna need reactor which i have a link for in the uh description down below reactor is a free plug-in for fusion and i have a link for it below and basically want to go in there and activate the star glow effect kind of play around with the settings there's no precise numbers or anything to this you just want to mess around with it till it's to your liking however you want your effect to look and give it a little minute to render and you can see now you got that glow and sheen now you notice loki when he does the, the transformation it has more of a white shine to it along with the green so that's how you get the white to it select all your nodes you're gonna hit Control c then Control v to paste Click your merge, first merge node, click the uh, merge node icon in the toolbox, drop it down. So now you got two green uh, glowing mask effects. Change it to screen. I'm also going to change screen on this one as well, on the first one. Go into your paint node of the second node, hit settings, or not settings, you're going to hit uh, modifiers. You're going to change it to white. And then you kind of get that green, that greenish white magical shine effect to it and the white one you want to drop the blend down a little bit so a little bit more of the green can shine through now you got a more of a kind of a neon it's like kind of in the cut right in the middle kind of like a neon light almost and the last thing you want to do is go into your spline editor you want to select all your point you want to hit control f it actually will make everything fit then you want to click in the uh, box and you want to hit control a to select all then you want to hit s to smooth it out Make sure you do this for both masks, both the first and second mask, so that way you won't get it clipping in, clipping over one another. And then, like, then it makes your transition a lot more smoother, a little bit more organic, I guess you can say too. <laughs> like I said, real simple, real easy. If you like today's video, be sure to hit that thumbs up for the to appease the YouTube algorithm gods or whatever. <laughs> And subscribe to the channel for more content. I appreciate you watching. I'll see you next time.